you are the father of this complete cosmic manifestation of the moving and non moving you are its worshipable chief the supreme spiritual master no one is greater than you nor can any one be one with you how then could there be any one greater than you within the three worlds o lord of immeasurable power parpur mein shila prapa shila prapa ki chai the supreme personality of godhead krishna is worshipable as father is worshipable for his son he is the spiritual master because he originally gave the vedic instructions to brahma and presently he is also instructing bhagavad gita to arjuna therefore he is the original spiritual master and any bona fide spiritual master at present moment must be descendant in the line of disciplic succession stemming from krishna without being a representative of krishna one cannot become a teacher or a spiritual master for a transcendental subject matter the lord is being paid obeisances in all the respects he is the immers uh, immeasurable greatness no one can be greater than the supreme personality of godhead krishna because no one is equal equal to or higher than krishna within any manifestation spiritual or meridian everyone is below him no one can excel him this is stated in Svetasvano, Svetasvatara Upanishad. Natasya kar, Natasya karyam, karanam, karanam cha vidhe. Natat samas, samas cha, abhyadikas cha, drishyate. The Supreme Lord Krishna has senses and a body like the ordinary man, but for him. there is no difference between his senses his body his mind and himself the foolish persons who do not perfectly know him say that krishna is different from the from his soul mind heart and everything else krishna is absolute therefore his activities and potencies are supreme it is also stated that although he does not how senses like ours he can perform all sensory activities therefore his senses are neither imperfect nor limited no one can be greater than him no one can be equal to him and everyone is lower than him the knowledge strength and the activities of the supreme personality are all transcendental as stated in bhagavad gita janma karma cha ye divyam एवं यो वेति तत्वतः त्यक्त्वा देहं पुनर्जन्म नैति मामेति सो अर्जुन हुएवर नोस कृष्णा ट्रांसेंडेंटल बॉडी एक्टिविटीज एंड परफेक्शन आफ्टर क्विटिंग द हिज बॉडी रिटर्न्स टू हिम एंड डज नॉट कम बैक अगेन टू दिस मिजरेबल वर्ल्ड देयरफॉर वन शुड नो दैट कृष्णा कृष्णास एक्टिविटीज आर डिफरेंट फ्रॉम अदर्स द बेस्ट पॉलिसी इज टू फॉलो द प्रिंसिपल्स ऑफ कृष्णा that will make one perfect it is also stated that there is no one who is master master of krishna everyone is his servant the chaitanya charitamrita adi lila 5.142 confirms ekale ishvara krishna dhara sabha vritya only krishna is god and everyone else is his servant everyone is complying with his order there is no one who can deny his order everyone is acting according to his direction 
being under his superintendence, as stated in Brahma Samhita, is the cause of all causes. Om Ajnana Timiran Zatya, Jnana Jnana Shalakaya, Chakshura Mili Tamyena, Tasmai Shri Gurave Namaha, Shri Chaitanya Mano Vishtam, Sapitam Yena Bhutale, Swayam Rupa Pradhanastam, Dadati Swapadhanakitam, Pateham Sri Guru, Sri Yukaparakamam, Sri Guru, Vaishnavansya, Sri Rupa Sakrajatam, Sadhana Pradhanakitam, Tam Sajivam, Sarpaitam, Sadhanakitam, Prajana Sikhtam, Krishna Chaitanya Devam, Sri Radha Krishna Pradham, Sadhana Lalita, Shri Vishnu Kamitashtam, Hey Krishna, Karuna Sindhu, Dila Bhadru, Prajnapati, Gopesha, Gopika, Nanda, Radha, Bhakta, Namastude, Tartakana, Shana, Gaurangi, Amadhe, Gurula, Vareshwari, Krishnapana, Sute, Devi, Pranamami, Hare, Priyami, Pancha, Kalpataru, Vyasya, Kripati, Rudhya, Yemacha, Patitana, Bhava, Devi, Vaishnava, Devi, Namunama, Vishnu, Pada, Krishna, Preshita, Yudhari, Shrimadhe, Bhakti, Vena, Aswami, Ramini, Namaste Saraswati Devi Gauravani Prashakani Nirvisesha Shukravadi Vashyatya Deshitara Jai Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Yadhyana Shri Advai Tagadara Shri Vasadi Gauru Bhakta Hare Krishna Hare Krishna Krishna Krishna, Krishna Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama Rama Thank you very much. So today we are Going to see the details mentioned in Bhagavad Gita chapter 11, verse number 43. So, before we get into the details of what is mentioned in the verse number 43, we will try to understand the context uh, of this particular verse. Actually, Arjuna has seen the universal form of Krishna. So, before he saw the universal form of Krishna, he does not know that Krishna is that supreme. So, he has done a lot of mistakes against Krishna. A lot of aparadhas he has done, offenses. Okay, in the previous shlokas, if you see, he mentioned that with unknowingly or maybe by love or maybe by ignorance, I have called you by name. Hey Krishna, hey Govinda, hey Adava. He thought Krishna is just a normal, ordinary person like him. Or at least if you compare with Arjuna, Arjuna is a king and he has defeated so many other kings across the world. But whereas Krishna, Krishna is one small uh, Yadhava. So he must have thought that you know Krishna is much lesser than me. So, uh, and moreover, Krishna is also brother-in-law. So, uh, and also both are at same age group. So, he has called him with his name. As in when he has to call him, he has called him just like how he called other friends. So, now he realized, because he has forgotten the supremacy of Krishna, now he realized that Krishna is not an ordinary person like me. So, so now after realizing what one should do, he should uh, accept his mistake and uh, ask for forgiveness. So when Krishna, ha when Arjuna has seen Krishna's universal form, initially he was wondering, like how come Krishna is so much? Krishna is there everywhere. I can see him, uh, his body parts everywhere in the world. So then he, with his... Uh, uh, surprise, he asked Krishna, who are you? So although he knows who is Krishna and who, who has actually been working as a servant for Arjuna, so he himself asked as if, you know, we also ask some uh, mystic powers if we see in our friends also, like, uh, are you really so and so? So I could see something different in you. So in the same way, Arjuna also asked, who are you? Then Krishna changed his universal form into the Kala Rupa. So then when he saw the Kala Rupa, then he could see that everybody is going into him. That means Krishna is trying to give 
Arjuna messages that everything will be destroyed in time. And uh, the current situation of Arjuna is also so that, you know, he is lamenting for uh, some reasons that he mentioned in the first chapter. So he says that I am going to kill these many people and I am going to become responsible for so many sins and I am going to become, uh, you know, uh, not enjoying anymore after losing all my friends, family members, well-wishers, everyone. So, even if I win in this battle, who should I show my victory? Because there is no one left to show and celebrate my victory. So, he's trying, Krishna is trying to answer. So, in his answer, is uh, showing that, you know, you are not the one who is going to kill and you are not the one uh, don't think that you are the one who is actually doing all these things. Whether you kill or you don't kill, in time everything will be destroyed. So this is what he is trying to show. So Arjuna has forgotten the Krishna's supremacy and we are also in the same situation. We also don't know who is Krishna and we also don't realize the supremacy of Krishna. Right? But our forgetfulness and Arjuna's forgetfulness is not same. Why? Because we are under the influence of Maya. But Arjuna is not under the influence of Maya. He is under the influence of Yoga Maya. So, so there is a lot of difference. That is the reason Krishna is very close to Arjuna. So although he is very close to Arjuna, he cannot execute the duties that he has to execute when he is associating with Krishna, if he remembers that Krishna is supreme. Okay. Otherwise, he will not let Krishna to serve Arjuna if he knows that Krishna is supreme and I have to serve him. So, certain, uh, for that reason, Yoga Maya, influence is required when Krishna comes into the material world. So, the devotees also come along with Krishna. And if the devotees knows that Krishna is the supreme personality, then the devotees cannot perform the activities that Krishna wants. And as part of these pastimes, whatever he wants his devotees to be part of, and he cannot execute that. His plan will get disturbed. So, so he keeps everybody in Yoga Maya. So that everybody forgets Krishna as Supreme Personality. Even Yashoda also forgot Krishna as a Supreme Personality, and she thought him as a normal, ordinary kid. So she she tried to chastise him, she tried to beat him, uh, she tried to tie him. She did everything that a mother does with his son, okay, her son. So this is what he has done. So now Krishna has realized, sorry, Arjuna has realized that Krishna is a supreme personality of Godhead. So the theme that we are actually looking into currently in Bhagavad Gita chapter 11, is that after he realized, he started saying sorry. He started asking for forgiveness. So, so far he asked for forgiveness. In this particular verse, he is telling the reasons why Krishna should forgive Arjuna. That means he is justifying that please forgive me because you are so and so, you are so and so, you are so and so. So, he will try to understand different aspects of this particular verse, what the intention of Krishna is, for Arjuna is, before he asks for forgiveness. In the first line, if you see in the verse, he is telling, Pitasi lokasya chara charasya. This is some message that we need to draw from this particular verse, particularly first line. He is telling, you are the father of this complete cosmic manifestation of the moving and non-moving. That means, if a father is in a position where he has to face a son who has done mistake, so what will father do? He will try to console him. He will try to say that this is not good. This is not. Uh, this is how you should do. This is what you should do. You must have given so many, you know, gyant, and he should say that okay, I am forgiving. That means he is trying to tell that I am your son. You are the father of the complete cosmic manifestation. That means I am also part of the cosmic manifestation. 
that means i am son to you so you should forgive me so basically he is trying to justify the reasons for why he should be forgiven so if you see in in shrimad bhagavatam also um we get a story we will discuss about it but uh, how can we uh, say that the krishna is father of uh, all cosmic manifestation so there is a verse in bhagavad gita chapter 14 uh, in that verse krishna says aham bija prada pita and okay? that means i am the seed giving father of this complete cosmic manifestation that means uh, the problem is that we don't understand this why because we all think that the nature is the source of everything even the modern science is saying that the nature is a source of everything so we we all believe in something that we can see we all believe something that is proven so we all get body from nature so we all think prakriti is the mother and prakriti is the source of everything just like how a son does not know about his father time also does not know about the source of the complete manifestation they only know what can be proven in their you know uh, possible ways but krishna is declaring here in for chapter number 14 later verses we will get it that he is the seed giving father that means just by his will just by glancing into the material nature he impregnates material nature so just like how a mother cannot have a baby without father without krishna also we all are not there so that means we all are uh, part and parcel of krishna we all are amshas of krishna so we all uh, get Uh, we all got into this material world because of krishna because krishna is willing to to you know manifest uh, to to create this material world so 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 it is proven from bhagavad gita that krishna is father for the complete manifestation now being father should uh, actually forgive all his sons so why should a father give his sons why because we will take a small uh, story from shrimad bhagavatam uh, shrimad bhagavatam uh, says that uh, you know ninth canto eighth chapter we get a uh, uh, we get a story uh, in that there is a king uh, his name was sagara sagara king and um, he has two wives and his second wife has one son his name was uh, asamanjasa okay so this sagara king was a great king he used to you know defeat any king across the world so sometime it had a, uh, there was a situation where sagara king had to uh, go out of the kingdom and uh, to fight with other uh, you know battles so that time king was not there in the kingdom so that time is asaman jasa had got a chance to do anything that he wanted so one day he went to play with his friends to sarayu river near sarayu river bank so what he has done uh, this asaman jasa has push all his friends while playing into river so all the children died only asman jasa is left so that was the situation and uh, nobody can punish him because he is a son of king uh, then king came back after he won the battle so he came back then he he got a news that you know your son asman jasa has killed all the people all the children who were actually playing along with him in, in the uh, in the river at the at the bank of the river so then king has to think of what he can do because he is a son and he has to punish him 
just like how all others do mistake when he when king's responsibility is not only to protect people he also has to punish people when they do when they commit mistakes so now he is in a situation where what he has to do should i punish should i not punish um then he asked his ministers like what should be the punishment in this situation the minister said uh, you have to give him a death sentence you have to hang him because he has killed many people so you have to hang him so then after all, he is a son and he cannot hang then he asked what is an alternate so what what else i can do but any reason if you cannot hang a person who is committing sins or who is supposed to be killed then you can throw him out of the kingdom then he has chosen the second option and he has thrown his son out of the kingdom so this is what he has done so why did sagara did not punish his son the way he has to be punished is because uh, asamanjasa he is his son so arjuna is also claiming that i am your son please don't punish me so that uh, i should deserve to be forgiven so that uh, asam uh, this is the one argument that arjuna is giving in front of krishna that i should be forgiven so this is the first line meaning that you know arjuna asked for forgiveness claiming that i am your son so you should forgive me and the next line talks about tamasya pujyasya gurur gariyam that means you are worshipable chief the supreme spiritual master guru gariya that means you are the guru of gurus parama guru so sri krishna is worshipable why sri krishna is worshipable why should one worship krishna so so we need to understand multiple reasons why krishna only should be worshiped why not anybody else so um the first reason is uh we should worship guru obviously so here he is claiming that you are a guru gariya that means you are a parama that means even you are guru to even the uh, gurus of gurus of gurus so how can we understand this is because if you see in the chapter number 4 uh, krishna mentioned that this confidential knowledge i am teaching you and before even i teach you thousands and thousands years back i have already taught to sun god so uh, that means this is not the first time that krishna is teaching to arjuna and this particular uh, 700 verses of bhagavad gita is not new or just not born 5000 years back this was a sanatana uh, uh, shastra so this particular uh, uh, instructions by lord were given even the uh, time of creation itself actually if you see uh, in brahma samhita also brahma says that you are adi guru because even brahma when he was created by krishna he does not know what he has to do he should have he, he needs instructions from krishna he needs he does not even know where he came from he does not know what he has to do wherever he say everything is blank so he want to understand what he has to do and how he has to do so then brahma did a lot of an austar this tapasya he has done so when he did tapasya then he was instructed by krishna from the heart of brahma saying that uh, you are supposed to do uh, the, mani- uh, the uh, the material you know the uh, what you call gauna srushti so you have to create uh, people with my power i will uh, i will give you the power so that with that power you can do that and he has spoken four verses of shrimad bhagavatam uh, shrimad bhagavatam has spoken Uh, that means all these four verses uh, constitute of all vedas all uh, upanishads all uh, puranas everything comes under those four verses but that means if you say we all belong to brahma madhva gaudiya sampradaya so 
Brahma is our initial guru who got initiated by Krishna. That means Krishna is the source of knowledge. This particular Vaishnava Parampara or any other Vaishnava Parampara you consider, the source of knowledge is Supreme Lord, Krishna. That means if anybody is claiming that I am the spiritual master, or if anybody is claiming that I am the guru, or I am a teacher who, who deserve to talk about the transcendental subject matters, then he should be connected to Krishna. If he is not connect, connected to Krishna as a source, his knowledge is not authentic knowledge, authorized knowledge. His parampara is not authorized. So, one should worship his guru and in the same way, the worship that we do to our guru, the offerings that we do to our guru will reach to his guru, the guru's guru. So, that's the reason even when we do Mangala Harati in the morning, we do Guru Puja. Why? Because we offer Krishna through our guru. So, in the same way, we should worship Krishna because ultimately, all the worship that we do to our Guru goes to Krishna. So, Krishna being Parama Guru, he is worshipable. This is one of the reasons why Krishna should be worshipable. And there are many other Krishna was only proven to be worshipable. Okay. If you refer to 10th uh, Canto, Yudhishthira Maharaj has organized a uh, uh, Rajasuya Yajna. So, in that Rajasuya Yajna, Yudhishthira Maharaj has invited all the kings of all over the world. And because he wants to claim himself to be emperor. So, he has done, uh, he has got organized that uh, Rajasuya Yajna. In that Rajasuya Yajna, if any king opposes that, you know, no, you cannot uh, perform this particular Rajasuya Yajna, then he has to fight with Yudhishthira and prove himself that he is you know, more powerful than Yudhishthira. So nobody has opposed Yudhishthira uh, you know, to fight against him. So in that Rajasuya Yajna, the, the Rajasuya Yajna gets fulfilled if um, he does a worship to a, a supreme person. Agra Puja it is called. So in that Agra Puja, actually there were not only kings invited, there were devatas were also invited in that uh, Rajasuya Yajna. Indra was also invited. Brahma also was invited. Shiva also was invited. So all demigods, uh, Gandharvas, uh, Siddhas, everybody came to that Yajna. Then who should be worshipped there? So then anonymously, everybody decided that Krishna should be worshipped. So at that time, Sahadeva has announced that we all have decided that we worship only Krishna because if I worship or if we worship Krishna, it is as good as worshipping all the demigods. It is as good as worshipping all the you know prominent personalities of this particular world. It is as good as worshipping oneself. So Krishna only is worshipable. So that is proven in that particular uh, particular incident that in the Rajasuya Yajna, Krishna was worshipped. Then uh, Maharaj Yudhishthira also worshipped Krishna in that sacrifice. So all devatas and uh, even including Brahma and Shiva got satisfied. So this is the power of worshipping Krishna. So that is the reason Arjuna is saying that you are worshipable, but I forgot that you are worshipable and I never worshipped you. I kept on calling you uh, that you are my friend. And, um, you know, just like how we talk to our friends, he has also spoken, but he never worshipped Krishna. So now he realized that you are a worshipable person. So that's the reason. Now he says, I realized my mistake. Now I will start worshipping you. So you please forgive me. So this is another reason that uh, Arjuna is telling Krishna to forgive me. And there are many other incidents where Krishna was proven to be worshipable, not anybody else. If you consider Govardhana Leela, in Govardhana Leela also Krishna has established his supremacy. Um, Indra did an offense and Indra poured the rain and then he's, he made all the Rajvasis suffer like anything for seven days. Krishna has protected everybody and Krishna has proven 
that Indra should worship Krishna also. Not Indra to be worshipped. So Krishna should be worshipped. Then in that instant, the Indra worshipped Krishna, in fact. How? He got a water from Akasha Ganga using his Airavata um, elephant. And then he has done the Abhisheka to Krishna. So this is one instant where Krishna was worshipped by even Indra. Um, and at that time, including all other devatas, Brahma, Gandharvas, everybody has showered flowers on Krishna because of his, he established his supremacy. Even in fact, in Brahma Samhita also, Brahma Vimohana Leela, Brahma Vimohana Leela also, Brahma worshipped Krishna. Right? So, Brahma also understood the Krishna supremacy and Krishna was worshipped by Brahma even. So, that was another incident where uh, Everybody worshipped Krishna. So, then, okay, you are worshipable. You are my father. I realized. But, as we have seen in the other story, Sagara being a father, he has forgiven. But, with that forgiveness, uh, what did Sagara do? Did he not punish his son? He still punished. May not be death sentence but he has thrown him out of the uh, kingdom. So now I realized that you are my father. I realized you are my worshipable father. You are my guru. Then if you also forgive me, after forgiving me, don't throw me out. Don't give me out. So just like how Sagara did to his son, you also don't do the same thing to me because I realized my mistake, whereas in that story, he has not realized mistake. So he, he was thrown out of the kingdom. You also don't throw me out of the kingdom. I will be obeying your orders. I will be worshipping you. So you please forgive me. That means Arjuna is submissively telling that you are the supreme personality and I will worship you. So this is the second lesson that we can learn from this particular verse. And the third one. The third line talks about Natvasta Mostabhya Adhika Kutonyo. So that means here he is talking, there is no one equal to you. There is no one equal to you. So how can there be someone greater than you? It's not possible. If you if no one is equal to you, there can be no one who is greater than you. So, so to understand this, uh, in Mahabharata, uh, Dhritarashtra asked Sanjaya about Krishna. He want to know what is Krishna. So then Krishna said, uh, then Sanjaya said to uh, Dhritarashtra uh, that, you know, you keep all the universes one side, Krishna another side. All the universes cannot harm Krishna at all. That is the power of Krishna. And uh, as all, all the universes, the power in all the universes put together cannot do anything to Krishna. But Krishna with his will, he can destroy the, all the universes. So that is what Sanjaya has told to Dhritarashtra that no one can be equal to him. Is Forget about no one. Can anybody be equal to him? Uh, no one can be greater than him. So that is what uh, you know. Uh, Sanjaya has told to Dhritarashtra that, uh, about Krishna's supremacy. So he is the only one who is maintaining the complete cosmic, cosmic manifestation. With his will only, the complete cosmic manifestation came. And with his will only, the complete com cosmic manifestation will destroy. So, put together everything. Nobody can do anything to Krishna. Krishna can do anything even without even holding a uh, weapon in his hand. Just by willing in his mind, he can destroy the complete world. So, this is what Sanjay told. So, Arjuna is also telling here, that there is no one equal to you. So there can nobody be greater than you. This is the another lesson that we can learn from today's verse. And the fourth line talks about Lokatrayepya Pratimat Prabhavaha. So Lord, you have immeasurable power in the three worlds. See, if you see one universe, if we see there are three worlds. So in these three words he is talking about. In previously we have talked about the complete cosmic manifestation. 
in the complete con complete cosmic manifestation there is no one who can be equal to him or greater than him how can there be someone who can be more powerful than krishna in these three worlds so there is no one uh, who can do anything to krishna so that is the reason krishna all his activities all his um, you know past times uh, all his even even the avataras what you janma karma everything is divya so that is the reason uh, in uh, 4.9 it was mentioned that charma karma cha me divya evam yo vyakti tatvatah tatva deham punar janma naiti mame disu arjuna so if you learn about krishna his birth his uh, uh, activities and uh, there is no reason for us to come back to this miserable material world so this is the uh, you know just by knowing about krishna we all can be you know getting rid of this particular material universe so so entire world entire universe is worshiping krishna including the people who are worshipable are worshiping krishna like we all worship devatas devatas and mah uh, uh, maharshis and devatas and maharshis maharshis and go and worship brahma because whenever they have a problem they go to brahma and pray brahma that you know you excuse us you help us you solve our problem so this is all they do that means devatas and maharshis also are worshiping brahma but brahma is also waiting for an opportunity to serve krishna to worship krishna if brahma gets an opportunity to worship krishna for a second also he will not leave that he will use that opportunity and worship krishna that means even a worshipable person also worship krishna so why not we so why not arjuna so arjuna is saying the special quality of krishna here that you are supreme and we are nothing so this nothing should be forgiven by the supreme so that's the reason arjuna is asking for forgiveness in this particular verse so arjuna's prayers will continue in the next verses so we will see how arjuna further will ask for forgiveness and how krishna mercifully forgives arjuna and accepts all his mistakes and help him thank you very much hari krishna and chakalpatam yasya kasindu bhaye vacha patitanam bhagavade guru vishnu hari krishna anybody has any questions we can take a few minutes that's